This conference will now be recorded. Okay. <clears throat> the topic what you're going to uh, what are going to start today is apex trigger. Apex is of two types. One is Apex class and Apex trigger. So, what is the purpose of uh, Apex? To write the business logic. Right? So, this is a business layer of your MEC architecture. So, where you will write your own custom logic. Okay, so where we can write the business logic using Apex language. So, Apex in the sense, what are the elements the Apex consists of? Apex consists of your a data declaration, right? Data declaration <clears throat> methods. It means uh, altogether it's a class, right? Your class is Apex. So Apex class can contains data declaration methods, system defined methods, right? System defined me methods and uh, we use exception and links soql sosl dml etc so all all this consists of elements of your apex language right your apex language can have all these elements so where i can use all these elements one place we have known, we, we already uh, covered Apex class, right? It means a controller in your uh, in your Visual Post page, okay? And uh, we can also write the class as an extension and uh, we can also write a utility class. It means a class will call another class, right? So common set of code, you can move to one class. So we, we have seen so far, the class can contain all these elements, which is nothing but your Apex. There is a, another framework where you can use all these elements. So again, it's going to be a place where you are going to write the business logic. Your Apex class, where you write the business logic. And uh, the Apex trigger is also a place where you can write the business logic. But there is a difference. There is a different you know, way you execute these. Uh, class apexes apex uh, types right so this will be executed uh, through a visual force page a class can call another class and uh, <clears throat> this can also be uh, executed from process builder as well you know process builder also you can execute this okay the topics will cover along with the visual flow okay apex, apex class can also be executed from the process automatically you can invoke a block of code <clears throat> and what is apex trigger apex trigger is a special framework okay it's a it's a special framework how i'm going to define the apex trigger see apex trigger is a is a block of apex code okay your apex class is also a block of apex code only right so we have a methods <clears throat> in the class and you have logic written in the method inside the method so when you call the method the logic will be executed similarly apex trigger is like your class is a block of apex code that would be executed when this when this uh, how will you execute this uh, apex trigger we are not going to have a method inside the apex trigger okay we are not going to have a method 
so that you know you will in call the method that's not that's not going to be happen in the apex trigger apex trigger is will execute automatically it will executed or fired automatically whenever whenever you perform any dml operation during a database operation okay so this is a very short definition of your trigger so apex trigger is a block of code that would be executed or fired it means what it will be invoked invoked or fired during database operations what are the operations we have the database operations we have insert update delete undelete when you restore the data from recycle bin undelete so these are the a database operations you can perform okay so during the insert during the update during delete during undelete i can automatically perform some logic that is a the, okay that is your apex trigger but what is the special feature of apex trigger it is going to be executed not only after after insert okay so usually your workflow validation rule and your process builder everything will execute after insert after update am i right when you perform a, when you insert a new record okay you can uh, send an email using workflow you can assign a task right when you update some record based on a field field criteria or formula criteria i can uh, perform some actions it can be at assigning a task email field update or outbound message right in your process builder for a new record for updating record i can perform uh i can i can i can invoke some actions okay updating a record creating a record post to chatter submit for approval right custom notification quick action you can submit another process so all those are actions you can perform in the uh declaratively declaratively in the process builder right so what are the process automations we have workflows process it means process builder we have flows will be covered later approval process okay so these are the automation process right so all these process will execute okay except flows flows is a different uh, uh, no different framework so these flow these will execute after insert and update so these are the events this process will fire okay these are the event this process will fire what about your apex trigger apex trigger will also be executed a block of code will be executed during database operations okay most important thing is it going to be fired not only after database operations what are the database operations after insert update okay and including delete including delete operation including undelete operation okay not only insert update you can you can execute the block of code after delete operation after undelete operation as well as after or before what does it mean before i perform any dml operation okay not only after before i perform any database operation right i can perform a block of code i can execute a block of code so before after insert before after update before okay after and delete and after delete and after and delete so there is no before operation is uh, type is supported for and delete so okay there are seven dml events so what are the supported dml events in your trigger so all these are the dml events you know based on which i can execute the block of code when i say before what does it mean we know we we can able to uh, right we have seen uh, practically in our uh, visual flow i mean process process workflow and all uh, what is after insert right because after insert uh, we know like system that record will be there in the database so based on the criteria your workflow and process will fire 
but what about before insert okay the record is not there in the database but how can we perform the a block of code with the value what user trying to insert with the value what user trying to update okay and which record user trying to delete okay so these are the scenarios how will you come to know the records which are not there in the database so that you know before even the uh, record goes to the database right how can i refer those values so that i can execute the block of code so that's a framework we are going to see okay so trigger is a block of code would be executed before or after the dml operation nothing but database operation okay so people are good with this there are two types of trigger in general okay like uh, you know the, the the way how the trigger is fired in that way we categorize the trigger before trigger after trigger okay there are two ways you categorize the trigger so when you will go for before trigger okay to save time let's go with the defined nodes the before trigger will fire before any data is saved to the database right before any data is saved to the database it means what suppose okay i am going to insert an account record i am going to insert an account record okay so before when i trying to insert an account when i trying to insert an account i would like to check the duplicate i would like to check the duplicate i can do that okay the record before even goes to the database i can get this name during runtime i can get this value during runtime and check it in the existing uh, records okay among the existing records i can compare whether any record is there in the database with the same name got me and i can uh, right those validations i can do so before trigger basically is fired before the new data is saved and basically it is it is used to validate the input it is used to validate the input before it is permanently stored into the committed to the database okay i give the another scenario the another scenario say for example i'm trying to delete a contact i'm trying to delete a contact the contact belongs to some account right so when i try to delete when user trying to delete then at the back end i'm going to execute the trigger at the back end i'm going to execute the trigger that what's the trigger is going to do the trigger will go and check whether the contact belongs to any account or not okay the contact belongs to any account or not if it belongs to any account then i display an error message you know uh, the contact belongs to some account so cannot be deleted okay the contact with account cannot be deleted some error message so before before the changes is you know you are doing some changes to the database what changes deleting a record so okay deleting a record so i am going to perform some logic the logic is going to the logic is nothing but checking whether the contact has any parent which means account okay if it if it if it contains any parent then i am going to block the user deleting this record so that's the kind of validation right so before trigger you will go for before trigger you will go for to validate the input to validate the input where in the case of after trigger right when you go for after trigger after trigger okay is required to perform some logic on the related record okay for example i create a account record account record got inserted okay when i insert new account record account record got inserted once the account record is inserted i would like to create an opportunity record automatically okay i would like to create an opportunity record automatically with some logic i perform some logic i do some calculation then i create the opportunity record 
okay because the apex trigger is going to be your a class right where you write the where you are going to write the business logic so we need to create a, a related record i need a record id what are the record inserted i need that id for that parent id i am going to insert a child for related to this related to the record which is inserted i am going to perform some logic so you need record id okay in that case you'll go for a after trigger so after trigger has fired after the record is saved and why we go for after trigger the reason okay we are going to perform some logic so used to perform perform related records based on record id right based on record id you like to perform the uh, some logic on the related records you'll go for after trigger because once once inserted once updated you get the record id right so based on the record you are going to do but here okay i'm going to validate the input it can be existing record or new record user trying to insert okay anyway you get more clarity uh you know, down the line when we uh, you know see the things right So, <clears throat> a simple syntax of the trigger. <clears throat> okay, like we have a, a syntax for writing a class, right? Public class, public class and class name. So, we have a syntax for trigger okay trigger doesn't have any access modifier okay trigger doesn't have any access modifier <clears throat> it will run automatically based on you know the dml event that you know dml dml dml, DML event that that is performed based on uh, user intervention or any you know tools or external web service through whatever the means the approach you know we uh, do the database uh, DML operation, the trigger will fire. It doesn't have any access modifier. Trigger is a keyword, okay? Trigger is a keyword, <clears throat> and then trigger name, on keyword, object name. So, okay, trigger is a keyword, the name of the trigger, on keyword, and object name. It means uh, which which record which object right you are going to perform the dml operation okay on which like on which object you are going to perform this trigger trigger logic okay so that object name and open and close bracket you are going to mention here the trigger events so what are the trigger events i'm talking about these are the trigger events open and close bracket so this will have a, a business logic when i say <coughs> when i say logic a body of the <coughs> a trigger it means your apex element <coughs> right it is your business logic right it can have a declaration <coughs> okay you need not have a you need not have a method here because trigger is a place where you just write the logic inside the trigger itself but you can have a, a data declaration here you'll follow this that just going to have a, a logic that's it a logic may have all these elements like you have in your apex class so this again another class that's it 
is like an another apex apex category okay right so trigger trigger name on keyword object name before insert what does it mean so any logic you write here inside these uh, braces okay this trigger will perform if user is trying to insert any record into the account object okay it means <coughs> if if user click on click i mean if user trying to insert a record okay user trying to insert some record and click on save button what happens this trigger will fire you click on a save button before that record goes to the database before the record goes to the database the trigger will fire this block of code will fire will follow this okay suppose this is a this is a ui okay this is a ui we are talking about and uh, here is my uh, okay here is my account object this is my account object okay <coughs> where i have name phone all the fields right so this is my account object right this is my account object <coughs> and user I click on this button user click on this button so what will happen normally what will happen actually the record will be insert into the database okay but if you have a trigger if you have a trigger okay i have a trigger so what happens now now this will not execute okay this will the record will not go to database directly instead what happens the trigger will fire first then once a trigger execution is done once the trigger <coughs> you know executed all the logic has been executed successful completion of the trigger the record goes to the database so what are the record user trying to insert okay it it will not go to the database directly if you have a trigger on the object on which object account object then this this logic will run first then the record goes to the database you will got it so that's the use of your trigger if i have a after insert what will happen <coughs> if i have after insert the trigger goes to the database first <coughs> once the record is saved then the trigger will fire so that's the difference between your before insert before trigger and after trigger <coughs> people go to this Right. Just to save the time, <coughs> I'd like to go with the okay some uh, drafted notes uh, for you guys. Right. So some of the examples. Right. So here, before insert, or before delete after delete so these are the ways <coughs> you can declare the the trigger All right account trigger and contact trigger on object okay <coughs> these are separate trigger okay separate trigger action
right on custom object what i'm doing now a trigger can also have a will also perform can also fire for multiple events also okay i can have one event i can have one event or else i can have a multiple events also like this okay so the logic will be performed this trigger will fire okay if any of the operations any of the database operations is performed on the object record so these are the syntax of the trigger <clears throat> okay now now the question is okay suppose i have a requirement i have a requirement uh, where if if industry is <coughs> okay apparel then <coughs> make the rating field rating field to be cold okay if industry is apparel then make the rating field to be cold <coughs> so what i'm trying to do when a user trying to insert, when the user trying to insert a record, when the user perform the insert operation, right? When the insert operation is performed on the account object, and I am going to check whether industry is apparel, whether the industry value is given by the user is apparel. If it is apparel, then I am going to give the value for the rating field. Okay, what I am mentioning here give the value i'm not going to update <clears throat> give the value right when you will say update when the record is goes to the database right when the record is goes to the database then you how are you going to update the record you, you have to use sql to get the record okay to your local variable and then you update and okay and you modify the value then update it back to the database using database update operation that's how you'll update the field uh, any uh, from your object okay when you like to update the existing record first you have to go with the sql get the record and change the value then using update uh, dml statement or database method we can update so th these are three steps we'll take but now what i'm going to do now what i'm going to do now okay we are not going to do all these things because record is not into the database yet record is not into the database yet okay before the record is inserted i am going to check the whether industry value given by the user is apparel if it is apparel then give the rating value to be cold okay we are not modifying it we are going to give that value that's it once the trigger is run okay so these are two statements we are going to have inside the have inside the uh, before trigger so basically here i'm going to have if right account dot industry equal to a barrel then i'm going to modify the rating field equal to cold give the value that's it once it is, once this uh, <coughs> lines of code is executed, once this logic is executed, then the trigger will run. So, uh, sorry, the <coughs> yeah, that the record goes to the database. Then automatically, you know, the record is going to have a TCS limited. So whatever, okay, record we inserted, and the rating should be, rating should be, cold. Okay. Of course, the industry is going to be apparent. So these values will be inserted automatically because we modify the, we change the value of the rating to be cold here before the record is modified, before the record is inserted. People follow this. You will have to follow this, right? Now the important point here is how to come to know, right? Because record is there in, not there in the database, but how can I refer the value during runtime? Whatever the value the user is trying to insert how can I get those values inside my trigger? We know how to get the value if it is there in the database, right? We can go with the SOQL and get that value and store into local variable. It can be a collection or it can be any single dimensional variable. 
I can refer the value inside the class or inside the trigger. But now what I need, I need to know the value during runtime. Okay, whatever the value user trying to insert, that value I'm going to refer during runtime. How can I get those value? Okay, how can I get those value which is not there in the database, but the record based on which the DML is performed, the record which which is which which is under context, right? What is the record under context here? The context here is nothing but before insert event. The record under context is nothing but TCS limited, okay, industry. So all these are record under context, the value under context. So how to get the the record values under context, the record which which is responsible to fire this trigger, okay. So the system, the self host has introduced, okay, has given a variable is called trigger runtime context variable, or you can say trigger context variable. Okay, so trigger context variable. So these variables will help you to refer the record under context, the record which which is responsible for delete operation, the record which which you are trying to insert, the record which is been which has been inserted. Okay based on which the trigger is fired the record which you are trying to update right so all those values you can refer using the trigger context variable you will follow this so what are the trigger context variables we have we have we have these are the a context variable we have some of the context variables we have right let me explain this Right, I just take the first one, trigger.new. What is trigger.new? The trigger.new is a kind of collection, is a kind of collection. It means, sorry. Okay, just listen here. I can store this into list of okay a generic object type yes object object list so what does it mean basically it's going to return what are the record on which record user is performing a dml operation that record will be automatically captured in this variable. The record will be automatically captured in this variable. Okay. And what is the what is the value this this uh, uh, the trigger dot new is going to return? Is going to return the list of s object. We will follow this. This is going to return a list of s object. Why it is a list? Why it is a list? Right. Take an example. I am trying to insert a record. And one record manually in in, in, your, in my system, but what happens if uh, we insert a bulk volume of account record through data loader, through import wizard, or any third party system, or any third party tool? I'm going to insert a bulk volume of data. Okay, in that case, my trigger will need to process not just one record. We have taken an example uh, to explain how the trigger works, right? But what happens in real time? The trigger may fire because of one record or more than one record. Okay. The trigger may fire for one record or more than one record. So this variable, the return type is going to be a list of a subject type, the generic object type, right? Okay. I, I just given a generic object type for a, for a, uh, no, to, to get an understanding. But if I'm going to refer this inside my, trigger on account object okay if i'm going to refer inside my if i'm going to refer this trigger dot new inside my trigger which is written on account object then where i can store this list of list of account trigger dot new people could do this 
So if you could do this, right? So trigger dot new is nothing but a list of a list of new versions of a subject record. Why did I say new? Why why, is it, why did I say new version? It's a new record we are trying to insert, right? The new record user trying to insert either through page layout or any tools. Okay, it's a new version which is not there in the uh, database already. It's a new record we are going to insert. So it's basically is going to have a, whatever the record user trying to insert, whatever the record user trying to update, whatever value user trying to update whatever the okay uh, record user trying to uh, delete uh, sorry insert or 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 update okay so the new data which is not there in the database already so that will be automatically captured in this runtime context variable right during runtime i can refer this value okay if you listen uh, if you see our example okay before i that record is inserted i need to check so now this list contains all the values right user trying to insert how many records the ecc list will have now in this example only one if we are inserting some 100 records during data loader how many records this ecc list will have is going to have 100 records okay then how will you check whether the industry is apparel for all this you know record in this collection we know how to do it right you can go for for each loop ACC account so now i can check a dot industry equal to so what is my what is our objective when it is apparel then we are just making the rating field to be cold just give some value that's it giving the value before the record is inserted we are just trying to give a value to the rating field okay right i need not do the dml now the dml is not required right because it's a record not there in the database right it's not there in the database and insert operation had already been performed we are not going to perform any duplicate insert operation here okay the trigger will fire before the record is goes to the database that's it it's already been initiated right the dml operation is initiated okay so we need we are not going to explicitly give again one more dml here so that's the logic we are performing in this example in these scenarios the dml event is before insert so how we are going to refer the record under context during runtime <clears throat> how we are going to get the uh, refer the record so we are going to use a trigger context variable okay which is nothing but trigger dot new we will follow this is it clear to all of you what is trigger yes sir okay fine so so like that we have um, trigger dot old okay which is nothing but a list of old versions of a subject record the list of old versions of a subject record it means record which is there in the database okay the record which is there in the database on on that record you may perform update operation you may perform delete operation in that case okay i will have the records which user trying to modify trying to update so those records i can refer in my trigger by by referring this variable i can get those values the old values right before the record is modified okay i can get those values here once the record is modified then that's a new version right i can get i can refer this variable and get those records okay sometimes you'll go for comparison compare the old and new value then do some action okay <clears throat> when when the industry is when the industry finance is modified 
So what is the old value? Finance. Okay. The, when the industry finance is modified and the new value is banking, then do some operation. The old value is finance, the new value is banking. Then in that case, you need these two variables, right? You can get the old record, the new modified record. Okay. So depends upon the uh, trigger DML event, you will see the values in this collection. Okay. Right. And uh, trigger dot new map. What is trigger dot new map? This is going to be a list, right? This is going to be a map. That's all. Okay. This is going to be a map. So basically, it's going to be like this map of ID comma. I give some generic S object type. <clears throat> trigger dot. That's it. So it's going to return an ID of the record which is under context and corresponding record as a value. Okay. The ID as a key, corresponding record as a value in the form of map, I can also refer. Okay. You would also need the map also. Most of the time, you also need a map so that you can go with key set, get all the IDs, and perform. Okay some sort of logic right and also old versions okay list of map of uh, okay it contains a map of id as a key and old version of s of the record as a value right and what are the other uh, trigger events uh, i mean context variables trigger is before trigger is after trigger is insert trigger is okay these variables the variables which i am listed here the variables used to get the context of the trigger it means what whether the trigger is fired because of before event or trigger is fired because of after dml event or trigger is fired because of insert delete update event so those okay those you can check by using a boolean check actually it's a boolean variable it's going to return a boolean okay it's going to return it's like a static variable in a predefined class called trigger We'll follow this. For example, I have a class public class trigger. Okay, there is a class called trigger. I have a Boolean static variable. Right, I will access this variable trigger dot before is before so it's always going to return boolean okay <clears throat> so just a, for a clarity i'm just given a, you know understanding purpose so when this going to have a, when this going to return true when the trigger is fired because of before event for example in our example if i check inside the trigger is trigger dot is before then okay <clears throat> When you say perform a insert operation, then is before it become true. Okay. Why, why, when you use these variables, okay, sometimes you return a trigger on multiple events, right? Right, I have like this. Right, I have a common trigger. I have a common trigger for to perform, uh, you know, logic for before, after. Okay, because this trigger will fire whenever the user trying to insert. Okay, I have some logic to perform, and uh, after inserted, I have some logic to perform. So every, okay, all the even, all the logics I am consolidating into one trigger. Okay, that's the best practice actually. Okay, instead of having a, you know, multiple triggers on the same object, we combine all the triggers into one trigger, but we need to differentiate 
we need to differentiate the control right else what happens if i have all the logic inside for both after and inside for every dml before after the same logic will perform right but we need to differentiate in order to differentiate we'll use this context variable okay so when the trigger is fired because of before insert only this part of the logic will run okay if it is after insert only this part of the logic will run because we have used a context variable here a boolean type this turn to true for before this turns to true for after you will go to this okay similarly we use insert update delete and all right suppose i have a you know before insert before delete my trigger then i will differentiate okay if it is a before insert and then if it is a before insert then do this if it is a before a, a delete then do this okay in that case we'll use this context variable people understand this all of you then we have a trigger dot size to get the total number of records under processing right so trigger dot size for example trigger dot size here how many record how many value numbers i get only one if this trigger is fired because of any you know uh, database uh, data loader event data loader operation then whatever number of records you are trying to insert or update i can get in this method that's it you follow this that's what you are going to get right okay right we'll move on to a simple writing a trigger for the same scenario we'll see how it works so we'll okay i go to the developer console Okay, I got a file trigger. So give the name of the trigger. Select the object, submit. So it gives some template, okay? It gives some template for you. Trigger keyword, name on keyword, object name, events. Of course, you can give multiple events with the comma separated here, okay? Right. So our logic is going to be performed on before, okay, before the record is saved, right? So I like to. Uh, yeah. So can I? So trigger dot new is a kind of is a list of a new version of a subject record. Okay, it's a list of new version of a subject record. So what is the object under context here? Account. So I can store here. So why I'm going for looping? Because the trigger has to perform the record which which is inserted through page load, maybe one record, or trigger should also be handled more than one record also. So reason we go for a list and a for each loop. Okay. In case, see, if, if there is no tools, okay, there is no tools actually, for example, I have only only there is only one approach we have only one record at a time you can insert then how can i do this trigger dot new so this is a collection right zero which is going to return just one record that's it okay then i can check whether if a is a dot industry equal to like that i can check but trigger will not process any of the records in case if you're trying to insert bulk volume 
this trigger will not process so trigger should be should be able to process more than one record at a time so okay we need to process like a collection Your trigger is done actually. Okay, if you insert one record, so just one iteration will go. If you bulk volume of data, then those many looping will go. Okay, fine. People good do this, right? So when this trigger will fire, we did not give the DML here, okay? Because the DML has been initiated. So when this trigger will fire, when we insert the record, okay, see here, I'm not giving any value here. I'm just, okay, trying to insert a record. Insert. I'm not giving any value for the rating field i say okay the rating become cold okay so it's basically we've ordered in the page right for extension demo <laughs> we've ordered in the page so it appears here right so what happens the rating become cold now okay so let's remove that uh, the overriding concept changes okay so that view no override good all of you Account. no right right so whatever the record we inserted the rating becomes cold now so what happens basically before the record goes to database it the trigger ran the trigger ran and just give that value value the field okay value the field based on a condition so it means what this is the simplest business logic right but it's any logic you can write like your class so it's a it's a place where you can write your apex code okay like whatever you written writing in your uh, class okay even i can call another class from the trigger i can call another class from the trigger okay that type of uh, uh, the scenario you are going to see down the line okay i can also call another class as well from the trigger a common set of logic i can move it in your class that class can also be called from the trigger Okay, we will follow this. So let's take a, a quick scenario. So this cannot be done this cannot be done with any of the framework okay any of the framework like your workflows process approval process and all right so all these will fire on after insert and after update only but what we did now using trigger before the dml is performed 
we are able to we are able to do this okay perform some logic okay before contact is inserted check if okay mailing city is header but then give okay then give the value for just an example to understand how the trigger works okay if you have a clarity on uh, the trigger framework then of course you can do this on your own okay <clears throat> okay the mailing city is uh, header but then i'm going to make the level field as a primary okay just an importance okay, just an importance of uh, uh, the contact okay the level field is just say uh, now what is a, a contact it's a primary contact or secondary something there is a custom field there is a custom field i'm going to give us a value primary right so all you do trigger so it is on contact object so what is the event before event before it is inserted okay and now this time uh, the trigger dot new is going to be what is the object under context the contact object Like this, we will do this. Right to save the time, just I go with a, a predefined example. Right. So what is the what is the requirement here? Before the operation is inserted. Before the operation is inserted, check if the stage is not closed. If the stage is not closed, then make the close date as 30 days from today. It means, uh, right, when you try to insert the current date, from the current date, 30 days is going to be the close date. The opportunity needs to be closed in next 30 days if it is an open opportunity. Sometimes you close the opportunity when you create it right so in that case uh, no i'm not going to perform any logic but because that closed date is going to be a current date but when the opportunity is not closed it's an open opportunity then i like to make the closed date as today so what you'll do you'll write a trigger on opportunity object before insert you're going to check whether if stage is not equal to closed one or closed last right so what is the condition you'll use here the if condition stage name is not equal to close last and it should it should also should not be equal to close 
plus two. Am I right? We'll go for. Okay, so when the stage is not equal to closed last and closed one, it means it's going to be considered as an open opportunity. And then make the closed date as current date from uh, 30 days from current date. Okay, here you can see we are storing the triggered at new into a collection, then do this, right? Can I directly refer like this? I can say one statement. I can also do like this, right? I command this. You can do like this. Okay. okay. Opportunities. What I did know, so it's an open opportunity. Okay, I just given some random date, but the date should be 30 days from today. Am I right? The date should be 30 days from today. Okay, and it's not R, right? Because if you go with R, then one of the condition always. Okay, it will work for either one, either one of these only. Okay, I need to work for the both. When the stage is close to one, close last also. Uh, okay. Yes, it is right only, right? Close to last, when you go with close to one. Yes, I think it's going to be and only. Anyway, the objective is this one. Maybe we try the iteration and, uh, and see what happens. Okay. Right. We got the objective out of you, right? So, how that, what's my objective? Right. We'll go for uh, the next, uh, the next trigger. We'll go for next trigger. A type after insert. After insert we end, we are going to see. Okay, so what is a uh, what is the requirement now? We are not going to you know uh, we, now we are going to perform on the record which is which is inserted into the database after an account is inserted. Okay, where the industry is finance and annual revenue is more than a million value, then we are going to create a high priority case. We are going to create the high priority case, right? When the account is inserted with the industry finance and annual revenue, we are going to create an high priority case. The case needs to be created for this account. Okay. The case needs to be created for this account. So how will you create a case record for an parent, parent account? We have a account ID as well. Am I right? Account ID is a field, the relationship field in your case object. So here I have to pass ID of the account record. What are the account record I inserted? Okay, so to, to, I need an ID. So I'm performing an operation on related object. So I go for 
after the insert event after the record is inserted okay check the value of the record you inserted check the value of the record you inserted record under the context by referring trigger dot new because trigger dot new is a a new version of record right the new versions it means the record which is inserted okay so using trigger dot new i refer the value of the account you know finance and annual revenue everything then i create a case record okay listen suppose i insert a 10 account okay with uh, with the industry finance and value okay more than 2 million more than 1 million i inserted so how many cases i need to insert i need to insert 10 cases okay i need to insert the 10 cases here right so what you will do now you may perform a logic like this trigger trigger so what is the event after insert after insert okay let's go to the uh, developer console okay so where you'll get the account records it's under trigger at new Okay, so now I'm going to check. Sorry. Okay, we'll go to this. So for every, okay, an account whose industry is finance and annual revenue is more than more than you know five, a million okay more than a million and then i am going to create the case record so what is the requirement i have create the case record with the name subject as case for the name of the account okay case for the name of the account so i need to create a case record how will you insert a case record sorry uh, missing something here. yeah case c equal to new case Right. Let's have a five, five minutes quick break. Just try to insert a case record and complete this logic. I believe you can do this. I send it in chat window. Just continue this. Just five minutes break. Five minutes. And all of you. This conference will now be recorded. So what does a subject the subject should be in the name of a, okay a case for plus a dot new okay and uh, New case, right? What are the other mandatory field? Origin, account. 
account ID equal to a dot ID. Right. Right. What are the the next step? What do you do? What do you do? We have to insert the case. Right. <laughs> See, if you keep the DML inside the for loop, okay, which is which is not recommended, right? The reason in one transaction, in one set of operation, maximum only 150 DML can only be run. 150 DML. It, it can be insert, update, delete any DML. In old transaction, I can only perform 150 DML. If if there are more than 150 account meet this criteria industry finance more than 1 million then you will hit a limit here you will easily hit the maximum limit allowed then the trigger will fail the trigger will fail okay to avoid to avoid we can go for we can go for a dml perform the perform the dml based on a collection am i right Okay, so this this list of case basically we are create to add this collection. That's it. Okay, once all the elements are added to the collection, then outside the for loop, you perform this insert DML. So now I'm going to insert case list in one in one statement right i can insert bulk volume of cases okay what happens if none of the record in the trigger uh, that firing the trigger none of the record that fires the trigger meet this criteria then this collection will be this statement will fail right because it's a null blah null list so to avoid this we are going to have a if condition here if only if uh, size is greater than zero then perform uh, then insert the case that's it we'll follow with this make sense to all of you okay so so just testing this logic i'm trying to insert a k account okay i'm trying to insert an account uh, with industry finance okay it's industry finance and there only more than a million I say this so what is the expected uh, the case should be created with this name we'll follow this and case is created for the account okay the case is created for this account only. That's the reason we are able to see under the related list, right? <clears throat> we will go to this. Yes, sir. Clear. Okay. I'll request. I request you to, uh, you know, do this exercise. I suggest you to do this exercise. The exercise is scenario five. It's a kind of exercise you have to do. Okay. So again, in the after insert event, we have one more. So what is this actually? When account is created with this condition, okay, annual revenue more than 5K and uh, 5,000 and the customer is direct customer, then you are going to create an opportunity as well as the task. So both are going to be created for this account, right? Based, uh, based on ID of the account. Okay, so I hope you can create this. 
when you create a task the important field here is what id how will you create a task for the account so the task will appear the task will appear as a related list here when you create a task for an account the task will appear here right when you create a click new task manually related to field okay it's going to be account so what is a related to field it's a label right so what is a field name what id what id is a field okay task for which company okay the standard object or custom objects are applicable here so id of the account record you are going to pass here okay and activity days is nothing but your due date the name of the field name is basically activity date assigned to is nothing but the owner the user object okay user from the user record so basically the owner of the account you are going to move to the assigned to field i hope you are able to do this so you are going to insert the two types of record in this trigger one is opportunity another is a task we will go to this i request to do this example tomorrow i will give the uh, i'll show you the solutions for you okay right okay so there is a the best practice the what you are going to see now the best practice i am going to i am going to explain now when you see the triggers in real time when you see the triggers in real time the trigger okay you will not see more than uh, multiple triggers on the same object you will see one trigger you will see one trigger which will perform okay which will perform uh, a logic for different types of dml event but now i have a true trigger on the account object a before insert after insert in case i have uh, scenarios on the same object before delete after delete after update right before update after and delete i have different you know uh, a logic needs to be performed business logic uh, you know for different dml event on the same object okay then there will be a number of triggers i need to have on the same object right multiple triggers on the same object okay which will create which will create you know uh, which will create a you know uh, a scenarios where you will difficult to manage the trigger you will difficult to track okay uh, what is a trigger which trigger fires this update okay what is the order and uh, any changes required uh no any change in uh, requirement then you will difficult to okay it's very difficult to manage and modify the trigger if you have if you have multiple triggers on the same object okay like your workflows and process right your workflows have more than one workflows on the same object then you will lose the uh, you know connectivity and uh, you're able to difficult to manage the uh, workflows so your process builder you uh, know is able to track all the replace all the multiple workflows with one process so i have a if else kind of condition in the process right so here in the in the trigger part i am going to consolidate all the trigger into one right i have two trigger here so i am going to consolidate see here i am going to create one common trigger okay i name it as uh, um okay account trigger right so two event i'm going to handle before insert after insert so all this logic okay so this logic is for before insert and and this logic is for after insert right there are two logics here but this trigger will fire for both the event before insert after insert the trigger will fire for the both the event right the trigger will fire on both the event how to avoid this uh, no to to fire only on 
uh, okay, this logic needs to be fired only for the before insert. This logic only for the after insert. Okay, so we have seen a context variable to differentiate to identify the context of the trigger. Right? Yes, insert. Makes sense to all of you? Okay, right. Yes, before I can go. In this case, I can go for yes before. So this will turn to true if the trigger fired because of before insert event. Similarly, I'm going to perform this logic in is after. Okay, in the after event only, I'm going to perform this whole logic. This makes sense to all of you. We'll follow this. We're able to consolidate the two trigger into one. Okay. We'll follow this. Still, we are yes, going sir. to, uh, you know, make this make this more uh, optimized way of maintaining the trigger. How we are going to do this? We are going to move all this a logic, a business logic, into a class, a common class. Okay, a common class, which is going to handle which is going to handle the logic for the trigger. So, okay, so I follow this naming convention. I, I name it as, okay, which is going to handle the trigger part, business logic for the trigger. It's a class, it's not your trigger. Okay, we are just trying to create a class. A name of the class, okay, the, I, I give the name, no, the reason, it's going to handle the logic, logic of the trigger. So here, I'm going to have a, method either you can go for a static method or non-static method also okay right so here uh, before insert okay so according to your what logic you're going to perform that's it value rating field so that, that's what i'm going to perform here value the rating field right so this logic i'm going to move here right so this is a class right the class doesn't know about the trigger dot new context variable okay the trigger dot new context will only work inside the trigger not for not in your class but i'm going to call this method from the trigger okay how you are going to call the method i'm going to call it's a static method so the static call a class name dot method name that's what you're going to call when you call this trigger i am going to pass this trigger dot new because the class doesn't have doesn't have the uh, you know uh, a scope to refer this trigger dot new directly right so when you call this i'm going to pass here so we are going to receive this in your class I'm going to receive like this. People could do this. Everyone is good with this. So from the trigger, I'm just going to have a, a call statement. Okay. From the trigger, I'm going to have the call statement. Okay. When you call the uh, calls the class, you're going to pass the record, the context variable. So now is a class which is going to handle the logic, right? So now the trigger has just only a call statement. Okay, so we have a respective method which takes care of that logic, right? Similarly, I'm going to include a, um, a method, okay? Remember, I can go with static or non-static, it's your choice. When you go for static, I save some uh, lines of code okay creating the instance for the class that's it so here create the case create case for account so that's the kind of uh, logic I'm, I'm going to perform here so the whole logic i'm going to move here so again what i need in this uh, method i need a trigger that new only 
right? So I don't need this. So this there is another method create case for ACC. So from the trigger, from the trigger I'm going to call. Okay, so account trigger handler dot. So what I'm going to pass trigger dot. Yeah. Right. So what you will find it in real time, all of you, you will find a trigger in this format. Okay. You will see only the call statement and the call statement will, you know, make, make it from uh, another class. Okay. We just use the one class here. Sometimes you'll have different classes which will take care of, uh, you know, uh, the trigger logic. Okay. Which would be named as handler or any other naming convention uh, depends upon your uh, project standard they'll follow the naming convention mostly will follow you'll see like handler okay trigger handler or insurance trigger handler a banking trigger handler depends upon the module name or depends upon your project okay so uh, the important point here is you love a call statement you love a common class which take a, takes care of you know um, uh, performing the having the logic for your trigger you will follow this so i have just one trigger i can write any changes required i have enough documentation here okay updating the uh, you know uh, rating field or you know calculating the taxes or something i just have these comments here so i can just you know okay, uh, maintenance right uh, doing the changes testing everything would be you know comparatively if you have multiple triggers on the same object i have one trigger to to analyze one trigger to debug you will follow this so this is the way you uh, you know follow the best practice so best practice of the trigger what we have seen now is a best practice of trigger Trigger should be able to process more than one record at a time. Am I right? One record. It means trigger should be bulkified. What does it mean? Do not keep a DML inside the for loop. Okay. And process everything as a collection. Do not keep. DML or SOQL inside the for loop. Write the trigger logic inside here. Handler class, am I right? Keep one trigger for an object. And perform the trigger logic inside a handler class. Okay. Use trigger context variables to perform the way do like this. Okay, so these are some of the best practice of your trigger. could do this
Yes, sir. Clear. Okay. So combine all the triggers into one. That is more important. Right, if you see here, there is a trigger. Okay, uh, do not allow user to delete. Okay, do not allow user to delete a contact if the contact belongs to an account. Right, if the contact is, its existing contact is under any parent, any account, then I should not allow user to delete the contact so in this case right in this case what is more important thing how will you throw an error message okay how will you throw the error message right so uh, if user is trying to delete the contact that belongs to an account okay that belongs to an account so it belongs to an account then i should throw an error message here the error message will be displayed here and uh, if it is uh, we are trying to delete using page layout if we are trying to delete using data loader for example i am trying to delete a uh, thousand accounts contacts so among some hundred contacts as some account it, then those hundred contacts must be rejected in the data loader and whatever the error message i am displaying in the page layout that should be captured in the error file in the data loader right that's how the data loader will process it's a kind of non-atomic operation, right? Whatever the record got rejected because of any issue, that will be captured in the error file. With the message, the same message, what we going to throw in the page layout, that should be captured there, okay? How we are going to capture the error message? See here, there is a method called add error. There is a method called add error. So that method, Okay, I can use within your trigger. This method is not applicable for any other, you know, any other non-trigger context. We cannot use this add error method. Only within the trigger context, only within the trigger framework, I can use this add error method. So whatever message you are giving here, that will be displayed in the UI and that message will be captured in your error file in the data loader. So that's the error message basically. Okay, right. Now, right now, we are, how we are going to identify whether the contact, okay, user, what user trying to delete as any account, okay? How will you check ma, when uh, when the account is when the child has any parent? We know the relationship query, right? Select ID from contact, okay. This is how you will check. I need all the contact that has a parent. You can do like this. So all these contacts, there are three, 33 contacts with belongs to some account. Soccer name also I pulled. Am I right? When I say equal to null, okay, when I say equal to null, so whatever contacts I have, okay, without a parent, so only those are returned. So account ID is a field I'm going to use in the where condition. Okay, right. For which contact we are going to check? I'm going to check for the contact, what user is trying to delete? What user is trying to delete? Only those contacts I need to check. Okay, right. What is the object you will write the trigger? contact and uh, important thing is what is the event you are going to perform this logic 
before user is trying to delete right the event is going to be before event object is going to be contact and uh, event is going to be before delete right? before deleted i need to perform the logic okay right and now the important thing here is context variable so what is the context variable you are going to use ticket at new or ticket at old ticket dot new i cannot use right because new is the new versions of record it means the record is not there in the database the value is not there in the database right so whatever the value you are trying to give new is considered as a new version okay whatever the record is there in the database on that record you perform the logic so that's going to be a old versions of a subject people remember how do you define your trigger dot old a list of old version is means existing record on which record you are going to perform the dml the new record what you are going to insert new version old version okay so on which record you are going to perform the delete operation existing record right so old map old or so what which trigger context variable will have value in this uh, event trigger dot old trigger dot old map okay you will follow this so my trigger is going to be like this trigger contact trigger on contact object before delete just five more minutes will complete people are okay with this people are good with this okay i'm trying to delete so i can now value when i when i right when i check this that's how you get the size right if you get the size this will have some value if you get the size of old map you will have some value but what about if i get a i'm trying to refer trigger new here the trigger dot new will not have value it's null it's going to be null because because it's a new version but when this trigger will fire the trigger will fire on the existing record which record you're trying to delete only the record which is there in the database right so trigger dot old or trigger dot new map we are going to use in this you know trigger right so now i'm going to check whether the contact has any account then i'm going to perform this logic i'm going to perform this logic not for every contact only for the the contact which is which is there in this trigger so i can also do like this in trigger dot old so automatically this query will fire only for the contact only for the contact what user is trying to delete if you are trying to delete in the ui it's going to have only one record if you are trying to delete in the data loader okay and it's going to have all the records that you are trying to delete in a file csv file right right what next we are doing here see here so this is basically we used in a, okay i can go with old map key set and get all the ids and pass the id here okay and get the map right and the next thing we need to throw the error message right only for the contact which has a account id so for every record i need to check okay we got all the records here but we need to throw the error message for individual record am i right not for all the record i'm going to throw one message okay i got all the records here but i'm going to throw error message for individual record so what we are doing here okay so we got the old map so what is the old map basically trigger dot old map trigger dot old map is a key as id and value as a record key as id and value as a record if you pass the key if you pass the key okay if the key is exist it means what is it means what the contact is there in this map what contact whatever the contact we got it whatever the contact that has a parent okay so get the key set move to the id set of id 
and iterate that id and check whether that id is there in the map or not if it is there then go with add error that's it whatever error we have okay anyway you know let's uh, i just given the overview let's you know give a detailed uh, a demo in the next session for this we'll follow this so for now i just move this notes into the uh, drive for your reference i mean a chatter for your difference okay right see you all tomorrow take care